Hi guys, welcome to episode one of our ReliCast series. So, uh, introducing myself, uh, Christian Jones, and my colleague Sam Eisenberg. Um, we're here today um, to discuss various topics. Each of the episodes will be covering a different topic, and we're keeping these videos nice and short. And uh, they'll be related on reliability engineering topics. So, today's topic is going to be, uh, can a FAMIA improve reliability? So, open discussion with myself and Sam, so let's go for it. I mean, the general answer is not by itself. I mean, doing a FAMIA is just uh, documenting a whole bunch of findings, uh, hopefully ones that are active and, uh, and uh, <laughs> reflect what you've actually designed. But... Um, it's the uh, the actions and the uh, uh, additional understanding that comes out of uh, performing the FMEA that uh, really gets you going um, in terms of improving anything. Um, and, you know, this is one of those cases where when most people talk about doing an FMEA, they're they're talking about actually performing the bit in the in in the spreadsheet, and uh, that's 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 not where the magic is. Uh, the the magic is, yeah. is is actually in doing it. <laughs> um, you say familiar it. in a spreadsheet. I mean that's you, in the process that I'm familiar with. Familiar in a spreadsheet, that's coming from tick box exercise, isn't it? So you know, so I, I've done a familiar tick in a box job done. I've met my requirement to provide a familiar, but that's not the end of the story, really, is it? So. No, not at all. And so, I mean, you know, this is one of those cases where uh, it, it it definitely has the most impact where you've got the right people in the room who actually understand what it is that they're currently evaluating. And once they've yeah. once once they've talked it through as a team um, and understood how something that's presently in its design state um, could potentially fail, you can start to identify ways that you can improve upon that and taking those actions and, uh, you know, going through that entire prototype fault <laughs> resolve, not just fix, but resolve and, yeah. then, uh, and, and then, you know, subtle redesign, um, you can absolutely get into a state where you start to see reliability, uh, you know, and the, the whole gamut, uh, durability, availability, et cetera, um, uh, improve. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. So, like, so um, like we've got in our software, we can prioritize those things that need to be improved based on uh, risk ranking. So we've got um, – that's something that needs to be added to that for me. Yeah? So you've got to do your risk ranking. And once you've got your risk ranking, then you can pick on those high-risk items. And then from those high-risk items, you then go away, do an improvement activity on that particular item – and come back and revise it. So this is where we've got the, within the process for the RPNs, where you've got the revised RPN score. So you're revising that by doing something in the form of an action. Right. And those actions we are we can track and trace uh, to, to ensure that those actions are done and completed and, uh, and do it in that form. And the other way is um, listing stuff with the RPN again, um, with the risk... Um, risk priority number and we're ranking it in severity first and picking those severe items so then we're starting to tie up with safety in that uh, those high severity items are a concern to more than just the familiar um, so you're then to be going in sorting out those severe items because the last thing we all want to be doing is putting out a product that we've categorized as severe <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd done nothing about it you know you shouldn't be well we've done the best the best that we can do based on the product we've got so uh, it just depends how severe that particular product is that you're putting out i mean if you're making a nuclear reactor then yeah that's a bit different uh, <laughs> Well, you're making a, yeah. a pencil sharpener, then uh, you're not going to be <laughs> that that severe. <laughs> 
but I mean, you know, that's that's just it. It's, I mean, so you know, people who are making cars, there's or planes or <laughs> nuclear reactors, uh, there's there's always going to be some degree of inherent risk. Uh, I mean, you know, the, there will yeah. be S tens that, that that exist within with with within your system. Uh, similarly, there will be a whole lot of S nines within uh, any of those environments because there's a lot of regulatory um, issues that can result in in, in failures. And so, uh, what you'll see when you've got those severity nines and severity tens is you'll see a, a plethora of uh, yeah. of controls <laughs> and actions um, that document uh, you know that uh, you know the team behind you uh, and in some cases the teams behind you and you know aerospace and nuclear where you've got people who are literally responsible for for safety as a standalone silo um, yeah. you know, you, you'll see all of their controls and recommendations and some actions that uh, that they need to take which then presumably uh, in the finalized version of the FMA uh, majority of those actions may become additional controls and yeah so it's it's just getting there um the uh, the other thing i'd like to note i mean you mentioned risk ranking logic and this is where um it's really it's 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 really a positive thing to see that both the uh, the international aig and vda standard as well as the latest uh um, american sae standard the j1739 2021 um both replaced rpns with action priority um Thereby getting yeah. away from just the the standard product of three numbers and instead you know building a complex matrix of uh, of 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 potential risk based off of combinations of scores instead of just the product of of three numbers um, and yeah. so it uh, it helps get away from gaming the the numbers game as it as it were um, so it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's nice to see. Well, the other point as well is the um, is a, the the re-edition of a product, so like a, a different mark, if you like, a, a different model, an improvement to the previous model, and using that same data. So with a database, something like Reliasoft, you're keeping the information from your previous version of the product, which you're then going to re reevaluate that data for your new version of the same product. So you're generating that and because it's in a database, you're putting all your effort into what the changes are. So anything that hasn't changed, then really the analysis shouldn't really be changing. It, uh, unless there was something that needed doing, like a severity was high or an RPN number is particularly high and you want to improve on that, um, other things generally you wouldn't necessarily change unless there was a real reason to do so. And then you're putting your effort into what is different and what requires the maximum um, amount of effort to do something about, um, thus saving time and money, um, you know, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, I mean, and this is this is where working smarter and not harder, um, you know, comes into play. <laughs> this is this is where uh, software starts. That's a really to, good way of putting it. Smarter, not harder. <laughs> Software, you know, software needs to be able to support reusing information quickly, efficiently, and without having to re-enter it or or extensively modify it. It should be that when you uh, when you're taking uh, your existing FMA and moving it into you know the next revision or next redesign, that you should be able to to take the entirety of everything you're looking to carry and bring it over as your new reve. Um, and 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 start from that, so that you're you're not reinventing the wheel. We're not having to go through the exercise of redoing an FMEA the entire way. Um, that said, again, uh, this is one of those cases where you need to have the right people who are doing the upfront activities as well. Um, and this is where you know having having some knowledge of the FMEA process and and being familiar with it really starts to pay off. Because um, if you if if you're the one who's redoing that and reusing the information, you should have an idea of which things you're going to carry and which things you won't um, you know for example uh, you you don't want to carry any of your previous actions the actions that you have in your last revision of your FMA will fall into two categories ones that uh, are in the process of becoming controls and that are institutionalized enough that you can consider them controls or actions that were one-time yeah. things which no longer have any place whatsoever in your new revision because they were either done and you've done something with them or <laughs> They weren't, <laughs> and uh, you definitely don't want to have those in your final FMEA or even really acknowledged in, them, in, yes. in, in the uh, the next revision. So, uh, yeah. you know, 
kind of not to not to beat the horse of uh, of uh, making sure that uh, FMEAs are 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 always you know 100% done. But the one thing that I've seen a lot of over the years is you know somebody will will, will ask me to to look over an FMEA and there will still be actions that aren't resolved in what they presume to be a finalized FMEA and yeah, it's the, it's like the first so many times it's the first thing you look for and you know so there's yeah. there's oftentimes you just see like action and then you know no action taken and no date and you're like well <clears throat> how important was it to get that done <laughs> for the yeah. release of your product uh because uh, you either want to take credit for the action that you did or you're going to want to clean that up somehow and so i mean you know kind of the 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 dirty swept under the rug parts of fme is sometimes is that uh, you're going to want to make sure that all of the actions every little every little bit that you've got that's a stem that remains is either pruned or you know taken all the way through to blossom um and so it's yeah. important it's important to do that the dangers of a uh, tick box exercise, isn't it? So, you know, it's just, uh, I, I've done my Vermeer, I can release my product. And it's kind of, yeah, it's just, yes, you may have done a Vermeer, but have you closed the actions? Have you completed the things that you identified? Just identifying something is a severe uh, a, a severe failure mode uh, isn't necessarily completing the uh, Vermeer. It's, it's just doing the Vermeer. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I think back on to our original question, can a Vermeer improve reliability? Well, as you say, not on its own, but it is part of a process of improvement. And certainly with the additional parts and the additional benefits of using a, data- a database like Reliasoft, um, then, uh, you know, it can certainly aid that improvement process. For sure. I suppose there's one other piece to add, which is that the earlier in the process that you do the FMEA, the easier it is to potentially redesign your product or resolve critical oh God, absolutely. defects. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and and so this is this is this is one of those pieces where uh, uh, you know timing timing is is potentially the most critical element of of when you do your FMEA because yeah. um, if you do it if you do it before you have a finalized design uh, then you know you're basically just doing a prototype FMEA or uh, yeah. sort of you know. Uh, and I mean, you can uh, uncover potential risks, but you can't really change anything. Um, and if you do it once the design is finalized, you can talk about how you expect to fail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and so exactly. yeah, this, is, this is where you find exactly. that sweet spot in the middle, and you know, you, you've 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 got your yeah. your design that uh, you know you've got your sort of initial go at it, uh, but you're not yet committed to this is the final design. Um, and you know, at, at that point, that's when you should start your FMEAs. Exactly. I mean, now that links in with the cost of actually making those changes as well. Because if if we do it at the concept stage, we're talking of a, an amount. You know, at that concept stage, you know, it's going to cost a nominal amount, and then exponentially throughout the life of that product, it's just going through the roof. It's just you leave it till the absolute last minute. For example, you do nothing about it, and it goes out into service. Um, you know, you're looking at a complete product recall which is hellishly expensive for something you could have done back in the concept stage before you started cutting metal for prototypes. It's just, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, you could have resolved it at the beginning. But yeah. again, that goes back to my little point with the, the revisions of a product, you know, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, you know, it's just your Mark 2 could be resolving those problems in Mark 1. Right. So, uh, you know, it's just, yeah. Right, and I mean, this is this is where you know things like rapid prototyping and the advent of three D printing and all of the all of the other you know sort of quick manufacturing processes that exist currently, um, where you don't have to commit to you know full molds or uh, water laser forming or cutting. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you 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 can now um, prototype things a lot faster without like a a full design commitment of of you know going through the entire yeah. design process and having somebody set up you know all the all, all, all the assembly lines to, to do something um, uh, between between actual prototyping and virtual prototyping. There's there's a lot you can discover within this so that you can actually be a lot more agile and responsive to potential um, issues that you find during your evaluative process. And so, yeah. yeah, doing this alone and just doing it as an FMEA isn't going to improve reliability. But when you when you make it part of a process <laughs> and you time it right, you absolutely can have a large effect. Awesome. 
Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you for your time. I think that, that sums up that topic. So, um, yeah, I think we can uh, we can say we've certainly thrashed that idea about and uh, certainly put our put, put our views on it. So, yeah, thank you, thank you for coming to this uh, Reliacast for uh, for that one. So, I say episode one. So, yeah, came together nicely. So, uh, so guys, back out to the audience. Uh, thank you guys for for watching this video. Um, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Comment below uh, if you've got any ideas for topics for the future Reliacasts, then let us know in the comments below and uh, and we'll uh, we'll certainly address those and have a look at those and don't forget smash the bell subscribe if you want to carry on watching uh, these videos and get more information from HBK on what we do in the products that we sell so uh, awesome thanks for coming uh, thank you Sam and thank you to our not to forget our cameraman Marius he's doing a fantastic job there and um, we'll see you on the next Reliacast. Thank you, Chris.